first time I had a, a really positive impact on him with the chief was when I was uh, working in weapon sanitization and he had reached out to me and, and kind of took me up under his wing. He showed me the ropes of how to get to where I am now to be a, 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 a good staff sergeant. So don't act like you're untouchable, if you will. So the best chiefs I've had were like that and you knew that they had your back and they weren't just saying they're giving you the Air Force answers and telling you what you wanted to hear. One of the most personable people you'll ever meet, a, a great Cajun guy from Nolens, uh, and uh, he always, uh, always made sure that uh, no matter where he was, no matter what senior company he was in, uh, that he was always going to look out for the junior airman or the junior marine or the junior soldier uh, and make sure that they had uh, a chance to speak with him, that they had his ear. I remember talking to him and uh, he kind of opened up to me about being deployed to, in 2005, I believe it was, to Iraq and uh, having some serious trauma and he actually was diagnosed with PTSD. Uh, and this was uh, around the time that uh, there was just a, a huge stigma with people coming forward um, saying that they had PTSD because of potential repercussions. And it just, it, it really meant a lot for me to see him as a senior leader in his position uh, to come forward and say, hey, look, you know, I, I have PTSD. This is something that affects me. It's something I struggle with. And this is something that um, I, I appreciate my wife pointing out to me. I have to think about to, you know, the first month that I was here at Luke. Here I am, a, a bright and shining uh, second lieutenant in the Air Force, and uh, a chief asked me to conduct his, his final reenlistment. Uh, so being a part of a squadron of over 200 members and having the opportunity to you know, conduct that, oath, that final oath of enlistment for him, uh, his last, my first, uh, was really meaningful to me. There was a uh, command chief from AMC, uh, Air Mobility Command out of Scott Air Force Base at the time, and this guy was, phenomenal and he kind of really indicated to me what I thought was absolutely essential for Chiefs and it was 10 two-letter words. If it is to be, it is up to me. And, and I think that that was uh, a moment as he relayed that to the Chiefs on the importance of their job and really that they are the wonderful um, cornerstone of our organization that, that is able to get things done across many lanes. Uh, and I'll tell you, that guy went back to be an LRS chief uh, back in his primary career field because he loved airmen so much. Uh, and I think that that's, that's the key for a chief is, is, you know, if it is to be, it is up to me and that they have to love their airmen. But the 63rd is just a new stood up unit and uh, our chief personally took his time out of his day to meet each individual new airman and like get to know us and he was taking notes of like uh, first names, like things we're into and I thought it was really cool because like he's busy all the time and he took a minute out of his day for 200 new airmen and then plus NCOs and then even uh, senior NCOs as well. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so when I was a young enlisted airman, um, I had a chief come up to me and when I was, I would say, thinking about either staying in the Air Force, getting out, um, and all my options, um, the chief said to me, are you committed? Um, and that took me aback for a moment and it, it hit really hard and it made me self-reflect um, and decide, like, was I committed to this Air Force? Or was it something else? And what his point was trying, what he was trying to make um, me understand is you are either committed to the Air Force or you're not. One of the most important things to remember about Chiefs is, uh, is their experience level, right? Uh, most of these you know, gentlemen and ladies have been in uh, for more than two decades, uh, and that's something you can't really replace. Uh, so it's awesome that they come from a position of senior leadership and they really can mentor up and down. Uh, I have to say chiefs are imperative in the, in the grooming and the mentorship of young officers like myself and, uh, and obviously building their replacements, right? They, they see the future of, of the Air Force uh, in, the, in the junior enlisted ranks and, and they have to, to groom and mentor uh, young people to replace them. I love uh, when new chiefs come out and are getting uh, their feet wet in an organization. You know, there's no better time you know, I, I love 
all our chiefs and how they interact at higher headquarters and command chiefs and all that kind of stuff. But, but there's something very special about being a new chief and being at the squadron unit level to where you're really gonna make a great, great difference in the lives of our airmen. And to me, that is a time that's not about looking to the next level. That's about time to live in the moment. You know, this is a great time for our new chiefs to live in the moment uh, and not even look, bother looking forward. You know, is just to go ahead and just jump in and put a big hug around those airmen and get the mission done with them. And it, it's, uh, I'm really excited for them.